Hello, Leslie here from Message in a Fold, and I'm thinking it's about time for an update on my breast cancer. And uh, I've had a rough couple of days. Uh, Joe is out on the road, and he will be back this weekend. So, okay, so I'm going to take you through what's happened so far since my last update uh, I had a visit with my oncologist on Wednesday and she said that my breast looked good mm, I don't know how that can be but she said it did and with her pinching and squeezing and everything it is the tumor is softening it was really hard really really hard um hard like a a tennis ball you know when you try and squeeze it it's, it was really hard <clears throat> excuse me so now it's softening where when it's pressed it leaves an indentation so the drugs are working on august 19th i had my very first set of this chemo shot Uh, Faslodex is what it's called. From what I'm understanding, I'm in a research study program. This Faslodex is used on stage four patients with the hormone receptive cancer that I have. It works really well for them. So this study, they want to find out if how well this Faslodex works for stage three in which I'm in that if it can be a frontline drug for stage three and I get one in each hip so two weeks later on uh, September 2nd I got my second set of shots and uh, that was that was not too that was not too fun, but it wasn't bad. the The shots are not that bad. It's uncomfortable, and in some areas it burns. It, in odd areas, it burns for a couple of hours. It travels. It travels across and down and then goes back up within the muscle structure on my hip and coming around to the front. It's uncomfortable. That's all it is. It's not something terrible bad. Well, okay, so on the 14th, on Wednesday, I had a, another set of shots. I was seen by my oncologist and she's happy with how everything is progressing so um i had my third set of shots and then i had a breast biopsy on the 14th on wednesday and uh, that is kind of it's not fun let me tell you And it, the rest of that day, well, I had to drive myself this time. Joe, in the past, has taken me to my other two biopsies and driven me home and to my other two shots. Uh, but this time I was on my own since he's out of town. And let me tell you, by the time I got home Wednesday night, I was ready to just cut this thing off myself. Uh, yeah, but I thought better of it because I know I'll cause more trouble than anything. So it's been it's been really painful and I am in considerable pain, but I can get through it. Okay, now 
for those of you that don't know the pain levels it uh, the doctor in things like this a, a nurse or a doctor they'll say will you tell me what your pain level is from one to ten and you're going I don't know it just hurts and it hurts here and then it hurts there so for for purposes of my telling you how to understand the pain I think nearly everyone has really sprained an ankle at some point in your life I mean really 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 super sprained an ankle so when your ankle is twisted the pain is at that moment while you're sitting on the ground and you're holding your foot and you're rocking back and forth and you're trying to breathe and you're crying I mean even tough people cry during a that's a 10 Um, a nine is when the pain is so bad the pain is so bad but you can you can take a breath uh, somebody asks you a question at ten or nine and and you might end up telling them to shut the F up and leave you alone uh, but at ten and nine you can't answer questions Um, eight. Uh, eight is when the pain is throbbing, 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 and you can't get away from it, and and you just want it to stop. Uh, but you're able to breathe, and maybe not so much answer questions or want to talk to anybody. It's just you're still at a level of eight you're still consumed with the pain a seven it is so uncomfortable the pain is so uncomfortable that uh, somebody says can you walk can you get up and walk and the first thing you want to do is punch them if you could um, so a seven years you're still able to think and react. A six, if somebody asks you to get up and walk on your sprained ankle, then you'd say, I probably could, but I really don't want to. And the, the pain would be throbbing. Now, a 10, nine, and eight, somebody tell you to get up and walk on the, oh, there's no way you could do that. Absolutely no earthly way you could get up and walk on a sprained ankle at 10, 9, or 8. 7, I mean, you won't even consider it at 10, 9, or 8. 7, maybe, but not so much. 6, it is kind of a possibility. Uh, 5, yes, you can get up and walk on it. And it's ah, ooh, ee, ah, oh, stop, stop, stop! I can't do this anymore. Wait, wait, wait. You know, so that's five where you can't. Four, it's uh, you're walking along and and it it hurts and you can focus and you can do whatever you need to do to get to kind of concentrate on something else besides the pain, but you can go. Uh, let's see, what was that? That was a four, I think. A three, a three is, okay, I'm gonna tough this out, I'm gonna get up, and I'm gonna walk. I know it's gonna hurt, but I'm gonna walk, even if it means I have to sort of hop. Um, a two, it's, the pain is, uh, yeah, I've sprained my ankle, and yes, it hurts, but I can get where I need to be. 
Oh, uh, one is... Uh, okay. Yeah, I've done this before, and I know that as long as I don't overdo it, I can get where I need to go. Okay, so that's the pain scale from totally 10 is so... The pain is so intense, you can't breathe, you can't think, you can't talk, you can, you can just barely function. You're so consumed by the pain uh, that you can't even figure a way out of it. All the way down to, okay, yes, uh, oh, with some breathing, I can do this. So my pain level is about a four, but it's not a constant four. Um, it's a and then it's gone and then it'll be a and then it's gone um, and then it'll be a and then it's gone and after the biopsies and and all of the pinching and squeezing and twisting and everything that's gone on plus the extra shots then when I finally got home on Wednesday my pain level was probably up around seven and it was it was kind of it, it was pretty much unbearable and the only way to get away from it was to take my uh, prescription painkiller and just go to sleep and I still didn't get totally away from the pain even sleeping today today it's down to a tolerable level and I don't have the choo 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 pains that are going on, thank God. Um, so my aspirin works on it. Okay. The tools that they are using in my treatment, um, I have these big needles. And when I go for the biopsy, um, you're not going to see anything gross. I'm not going to show you anything. Um, I'm just going to show you the bandage. I need to change the bandage. And so I'm just going to show you the... You can see a little bit of, of the, the seepage where the bandage is. Uh, it's just a little spot. but that's the area where they went in for the biopsy. That long needle thing that went into my breast, it has a trigger on it somewhere. I don't know where, but it, it takes out core samples of the tissue. And someone from the research study was there to collect the samples that get frozen with a liquid nitrogen or something like that. It has to immediately go in a nitrogen bath or I don't know what it is. They give me a shot of Novocaine in the breast and the Novocaine, the local anesthetic, is supposed to deaden my breast when they go in for these, these samples. And then they give me another drug and I'm not sure what it is but it's, it's supposed to kind of help with the blood clotting or something one of them makes me shake, makes my entire body just vibrate. I don't know which one it is, but I just vibrate. Uh, and then that kind of freaks me out. So the doctor puts, they have to cut, they have to make an incision in my breast to get the pokey tool to go in. And my previous biopsy, she says, one, two, three, and then it went click startled me. I jumped everywhere and she said, oh, I meant to count so when I got to three then you wouldn't jump. So when I went in on Wednesday, this time for the biopsy, I said, okay, I know that when you start counting down then I, I won't jump. And I didn't. So they took four samples. The first two, there wasn't a comment made. Uh, the second, the last two, the third, and the fourth one, I kind of felt them digging around. That was a bit uncomfortable. And the third sample that came out, the doctor, the radi radiologist doctor said, 
Mm, that looks necrotizing. I know what that means. That means that the tissue is dead. And uh, so, and I'm waiting to find out what they're going to do. And so she took the fourth sample and the, the research person that's collecting the sample said, yes, that does look necrotizing. So the fourth sample they get, that's necrotizing. Yes, that's necrotizing. All right, they didn't get excited. I'm still shaking. I'm still vibrating. And uh, not thinking coherently, but I did think that if this was a bad thing, they would admit me in the hospital right then and there. Well, um, I had taken... I had taken a bunch of these boxes up to the various people that have been caring for me and dropping them off. The receptionists, the people that make my appointments, the nurses, the doctors, the technicians, and and even some of the, the support staff or other people that are in on the research project that are coming in and learning. I'm giving them, hey, if you give it to one, you got to give it to all, especially if they're, it's in a public thing. You know, why didn't I get one? So, at my biopsy, shaking, they're done. I know from previous ones, as soon as they're done, everybody skedaddles and gets out of there. So, I said, wait, 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 don't everybody leave. There's a red bag over there on the chair. And heads turn, and they nod yes. They see the red bag, the red gift bag. I don't have it in here. But anyway, they see the red gift bag. Yes. I said, would you somebody please get that bag and bring it to me? So then quickly, somebody goes, gets the bag, and brings it over. And I'm shakily drawing, drawing this thing out of the bag. And I said, this is to thank you guys for helping me through this so that I don't totally freak out and when I have questions you answer them. There was a a man a man with graying hair that was doing a residency in radiology and he had been a doctor for many years and uh, so I guess he s decided to switch his focus to radiology from whatever else it was. So he was in the biopsy with me doing uh, doing some training or something. I'm going to OU Medical Center, so it is a teaching hospital. And, hey, I don't mind this. I, I don't mind being used in a way as a teaching tool. I don't mind that at all. As long as they help me to understand what's going on with me and my body and how this treatment is going, I don't mind it at all. So, anyway... I'm handing these out and I handed one to the man. And everybody says that the doctor, the radiologist, the the research person with the liquid nitrogen, the the technician nurse that was running the uh, ultrasound thing to help get this done, the the doctor doing his residency, they were all saying, "Oh my god, thank you." Thank you, this is so sweet of you. I didn't, I mean, hey, I appreciate these people that are doing things for me. So I had to, <clears throat> I had to show my appreciation. I was totally surprised. The man, I have no idea what that doctor's name is, but the man doing his residency, he said, in all the years that I've been a doctor, nobody has ever given me a thank you gift, ever. That's that kind of I've heard it. My daughter is an ICU trauma nurse, and uh, you know I've heard that they don't get the thank yous and little special touches. Um, so I said, well, it's not much. I just want to show my appreciation. They are little cards that that you can attach to a gift or you can send out as a little thank you. And he said, I'm not doing anything with mine. I'm saving mine. I am keeping mine. This is the first time that anybody has ever thanked me. And I am keeping this just as it is. I'm not doing anything with it. 
So I, you, well, that, that made me feel glad and uncomfortable all at once. So, you, I don't know. At least I made somebody feel good, and and I was pretty drugged up, so I wasn't feeling too bad. Okay, so now, drugged up, all shaky, ears ringing, no pain, no pain. I gotta drive home. I drove myself up there, I've gotta drive home. And I know within about 20 minutes, half an hour, the drugs are gonna wear off and I need to get home as quickly as I can. And I'm about 30 miles away from the treatment center. So I get home, Joe calls me, starts asking me questions. I'm at a pain level of an intermittent eight. He's asking me questions. He's got problems out where he is with the trucks that he's trying to get and deliver. And I don't want to be on the phone with him right now. I want to just go hibernate, leave me alone. I want to find a cave, a dark cave. Let me be. I don't want to talk to anybody. I don't want to do anything. Just leave me alone. And he's saying, what happened? What happened? I said, I'll tell you later when you, when you get, uh, when you get your trucks picked up. Huh? Oh, Joe says, oh my God, that's bad news. You got to tell me. No, it's not bad news. Oh, it must be really bad news if you're not going to tell me. Okay, so now I'm getting wound up. And I'm in pain. He's winding me up because he's off in Colorado. I'm in Oklahoma. He's not right here. He wasn't there to talk to the doctors or anything. So he's creating his own hell and he's passing that hell on to me. And I said, okay, okay, okay. All right, all right, all right. No, my breast was never in danger of the cancer exploding out of it. So that's a good thing. Um, I said, but it is necrotizing. And I'm not sure exactly what that means. But I think if it was really bad, I would be calling you, telling you they've admitted me into the hospital. Necrotizing, what does that mean? What does that mean? Are you going to tell me what that means? Um, hello, I can't take a breath. He, <laughs> he is, oh man, he's in hell. He's in hell. And so I said, necrotizing. That means that the flesh is dying. And he's, what? Oh my God, you're going to get gangrene. I can't, I can't have you. No, no, no. I'm coming home. I'm coming home right now. I got to get you to the doctor. I got to find out what's happening. They got to take that off. I can't lose my wife. I'm on my way home. And then, okay, so he's, he's up on the ceiling and I'm on my way up there as well. I'm in pain. He's making me crazy. I can't get him to stop. He's making himself even crazier. Now I'm getting angry. And I said, I told you I didn't want to tell you this right now because I know you're having some trouble out there and you don't need this. And so he says, I need to know what's going on with my wife. Are you in pain? tender, loving wife that I am, I said, yes, I'm in pain. Hang up the effing phone. <laughs> so, bye. So I hung up the phone. Oh my goodness. So after I was able to get some control of the pain that I was having, I called him back and said, I'm sorry that I hollered at you, but we both were we we both were going crazy and somebody needed to put a stop to the crazy train. So I called the woman who's the nurse that's the head of the research thing. I called her 
and had to leave a message and saying they're saying the samples are necrotizing. Is that a bad thing? Is that a good thing? Does that mean I'm going to have gangrene? Do I need to go to the hospital? Do I need to go see the doctor? Do I need to do something? So she calls me back a couple hours later. This was uh, yesterday. Yes, Thursday, yesterday. She calls me back and she says, no, that's a good thing. That means that the shots you're getting, the Fazlodesc, are Fazlodec, Dex, whatever it is, they are killing the cancer. And my body is going to absorb these dead cancer cells. Now, the good news is that it's another 12 weeks before I have to go through another biopsy. So I can, uh, I can have my doctor's appointments. Yeah, um, I get another set of shots in October. Uh, but I don't, I don't have to get another biopsy for a while. Okay, this is Leslie from Message in a Fold. I am not going to let this thing get me to the point where I can't do my videos. Uh, they might be late. They might not be on a regular schedule. Uh, it just depends on how I'm feeling. But I'm going to continue making videos. And... For as long as I can and as long as I can deal with this okay all right I don't know what else to say so I'm going to say thank you thank you thank you every single one of you for all of your encouragement your support your prayers your love your messages to me on Facebook oh and then there's one other thing one other thing I've got to say Social media, uh, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. <sighs> what have I done? I'm trying to stay connected in all of them. And it's uh, quite overwhelming. So sometimes you see me and sometimes you don't. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm trying my best to stay connected with you guys. Oy, oy, oy. Hopefully that'll get better. All right. So, I want to say thank you. Thank you to Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, all of you awesome people that give me encouragement. You support me. You have your prayers, uh, your thoughts, your precious good thoughts, um, and, and your love and your hugs. And I just, I appreciate every single one of you that take the time to think about me and and love on me okay I, I i gotta go i gotta go all right this is leslie from message in a fold saying i'll be back bye